Welcome to the No Car Red Show with Steve Cohen, our special guest today, USF alum, Jeff Kane. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Steve, for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, Jeff, it's, I'm always curious to talk about uh, people's past because my past is, you know, I am a total representation of where I came from. Uh, talk about where you grew up and tell me about mom and dad. Well, I'll tell you, um, I, I, I'm a fifth generation uh, family in Watsonville, California. Um, it's, a, it's an agricultural community, like I said, uh, strawberries and lettuce. It used to be apples. We used to be the, the apple center of the United States until uh, the Washington area took over. But um, my, uh, my dad was a Santa Clara alum, uh, class of 1950. Um, and as soon as he got out of Santa Clara, he married my mom, who was just getting out of high school. He was seven years older than my mom. My mom and him got together when she was only 17. Wow. And I'm one of five kids. So um, we have a long history with Santa Clara. And uh, like I said, my dad went there, my uncles went there, my sister went there. And so when I graduated from high school, Watsonville High, 1978, um, my dad said, uh, son, you know, you're going to go to Santa Clara. And I said, okay. And then I got something in the mail to apply to USF. So I applied to USF too, just thinking, okay, I'll just apply here. Didn't apply anyplace else. And that's the one, one big lesson I learned over time with, with my own boys is, hey, give yourself as many opportunities as you can um, when you're applying to colleges and so forth and see what's out there. Anyway, long story short, um, I got accepted at USF, but I didn't get accepted at Santa Clara. And my dad was, you know, good friends with a lot of the Santa Clara football uh, program back in the 40s. You know, they went to what, the Sugar Bowl or Orange Bowl or something like that. And, uh, you know, he couldn't believe it. He said, well, I'm going to try to talk to people and see what I can do. And, and he said, in the meanwhile, son, go to USF, stay there for a semester, um, show them what you can do and then transfer to Santa Clara. Well, so... My, that's what brought me to USF. And I moved into Phelan Hall uh, right around the corner from Bill Cartwright's room. And I was right in between two other basketball players, a guy by the name of Mike Rice. And he was a transfer from yeah. Pitt and Bobby Geron Jr. And I got to know these guys. And uh, I was like, you know, the only guy from my area that moved to San Francisco and went to USF. And um, so Bobby Gerard Jr., whose dad, Bob Sr., was the equipment manager at USF for many, many years, he said, hey, Jeff, why don't you get involved and help my dad out in the locker room and see what you can do? And the next thing you know, I got a job as the one of the managers. And so the semester comes up. My dad says, OK, you ready to transfer to, to, to Santa Clara? And I said, Dad, I, I love USF. I love being around all these people. And I'm going to stay. And uh, so the rest was kind of history. Um, and I stayed at USF and graduated in four years and, um, it was great. But, uh, like I said, we're a fifth generation family in Watsonville, California. I'm in the insurance business. Our, our insurance brokerage firm was started in 1908 by my great grandfather. And so that's what I'm doing now. Hey, give me your, and I'm always curious about this. <laughs> Once you got to USF, give me your impressions of USF and give me your impressions of of, uh, because you spent uh, an inordinate amount of time around the team, about the team and coach. Well, yeah, that's uh, it was it was you know I was kind of like a little kid, big big sports fan, and uh, you know my eyes were were uh, wide open. Um, I think it was the was it that year? I think it was the year either USF played China or the Soviet Union. I can't remember at the Open Coliseum early in the year. It was like a China. An exhibition game. Yeah, I think it yeah, was China. China. Yeah. And uh, so that's when I first started helping out and getting involved. But, um, you know, the one thing I always said about USF, uh, Bill, that I, I tell people to this day is I really got a double education. Um, being in San Francisco and learning all about the city, uh, the different neighborhoods and all of that was a great education in and of itself. 
And then I got, of course, the, the good Jesuit education of being part of USF. Um, and then the basketball stuff was just kind of like uh, the icing on the cake. Uh, it enabled me to make some good friends that are lifelong friends to this day. Uh, you know, Bill and Bart Bowers, Marvin Delotes, you know, all the guys, the coaches. I got to be good friends with a lot of the coaches, the travel that we did. So it was, it was like this little kid out of Watsonville who was supposed to go to Santa Clara, ends up in San Francisco, and it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. And the connections I made in San Francisco. I ended up starting my business career in San Francisco as well, uh, were invaluable. So, you know, that's why I always have a, a, a soft spot in my heart for USF and being on that, on that small campus and everything else. I even wanted to go out for the baseball team. They were so lousy at the time that uh, uh, Dante Benedetti was just retiring and there was a coach named uh, Bowman, I believe. And I, yeah. I wanted to tell him, hey, I want to I pitch. <laughs> so but that never worked out you know so you're you're leaving school now so uh tell me about some of those lessons that you learn as you go after now your first job well the one thing you one thing you learn in life right is uh um and anything you do whether it's your friends your classmates or business there's there's great people to be around and there's quote unquote assholes. So surround yourself with the good people and, and refrain from the assholes, right? The old adage is you become who your friends are. And I think it's really important that uh, any advice you can give youngsters is, you know, surround yourself with good people, people that make you better. Um, you know, USF, Bill, you remember Bobby Geron Sr., right? Of course. Yeah, our equipment manager, extraordinaire. Um, and Steve, I don't know if anybody on your podcast have talked about Bobby Sr. before. We had uh, uh, Bobby Jr., right? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So so Bob Sr. was Bobby Jr.'s dad, and, and Bobby was an ex-military guy. And what was great about that was, you know, here I'm again, this kid, this kid away from home, learning things for the first time. He was military. You fold your clothes a certain way. You fold your towels a certain way. You hang your clothes a certain way. And um, it, was, it was a great experience. And he taught you those standards of doing things the right way and making sure that um, you did the right thing. And he, you know, another thing he told me, he said, being around the team, he said, you know, Jeff, you're going to see a lot of stuff. He said, don't go run and tell the coaches everything you see. He said, you come and tell me and I'll take care of everything. So that was the kind of great relationship that, uh, that I had with Bobby and I ultimately had with the players because they could trust me. Can you talk about the uh, couple of coaches that uh, you had when we were there? Uh, well, first of all, first of all, was Dan Belomini. He was your coach that yes. came in last year. Um, I was uh, uh, fortunate enough to be part of that team uh, with Dan Belomini for the first two years. And then Coach Pete Berry took over uh, when uh, Dan left the program. There was kind of a big shuffling of, of coaching staff at that point um, after my sophomore year. Uh, Balamini, Mike Brown uh, was out, and Pete Berry, who was one of the assistants, took over as head coach, hired a couple of other coaches, and actually did really well. I think he went, I think, 24 and 6 his first year. And, I want to say 25 and seven the year after that. And I always kind of say it's kind of the, the period of 78 to 82 were the forgotten years. Great teams, championship teams. They kept winning the West Coast Athletic Conference, the WCAC, year in and year out. But because of the problems that happened after 82, nobody likes to give those teams any credit, which is, which is kind of sad because they really, really were successful and had some really good kids, some good players. Um, and I don't think they get enough recognition, in my opinion, Bill. Can you talk about your first job? How did how, how'd you do that? First job in? First job out of school. Well, that was, uh, I graduated and 
uh, living in the city, 22 years old. Uh, my first job was with the Hartford Insurance Group um, at 650 California Street. So um, I was a trainee and I was commuting to work every day, wearing a coat and tie, briefcase. And after six months, they said, hey, did you ever wonder where you're going to be transferred? And I said, transfer? What do you mean transferred? I'm going to stay here in San Francisco. And they said, this was on a Wednesday. And they said, well, the general manager of the Reno office needs to talk to you. We got a flight for you on Friday. So I flew up to Reno, Nevada that morning, interviewed with them. Didn't know I could had any choice in the matter. You know, they gave me a, a decent bump in salary. And I'm flying home that day realizing I just accepted a job to move to Reno, Nevada in two weeks. And so I was I spent a year in Reno, Nevada, kicking and screaming to get back to San Francisco, which they ultimately did. But uh, that was my my uh, first interaction with the corporate world. And um, again, another life lesson, those things you learn. Again, I with in our in our town now, I tell my my two boys, which are in college and you got to get out of here. You got to get out of town. You got to go see what's out in the world and find your own way. And um, so, again, it's it's not easy when you're going through it, but it's good to it's good to grow, right? Well, this is interesting. So, why out of all the industries, why insurance? How how did that happen? Did you meet somebody or? Well, how did again, that it comes back to uh, the family business. You know, we have an independent insurance agency that was formed by my great grandfather in 1908. So when I graduated, my dad said, you want to get a job in the insurance business? Why don't you interview with Hartford Insurance Group in San Francisco? I know some people, they can probably uh, get an interview with them. And I did. And it took a few months. They didn't have any openings. But then they called me one day and said, hey, would you like to come to work for us? And so that's how it all happened. The connection was there to get in the insurance business, ultimately knowing that maybe someday my dad would want me to come back and join the family business. Okay, so talk about what happened after Hartford. Um, after Hartford, I went to work for Transamerica in the Pyramid in uh, downtown San Francisco for another year after that. And then it was about 1987, um, my dad's partner retired um, was running for a political position and he actually didn't get elected, but um, so his partner was retired. My dad said, we want you to come back to Watsonville and join the family business. And I did. So um, the rest is history. I've been, I've been here for the last 32 years. And it's been, uh, been a blessing. I'm very, very fortunate. My dad always told me, you know, son, I can't tell you you're going to get super wealthy in this position, but you're going to earn a good living because everybody needs insurance. So it's it's held true. And I mean, during this pandemic, we've had one of the most successful years we've ever had. We've never had a didn't have to lay anybody off. We didn't have to close our doors. You know, we locked our doors so to keep people out. And we do everything remotely, but um, we've been you know very blessed. Now, Jeff, you are a, um, a donor, and you come back to USF to watch games. Um, give me a comparison um, between the current dons and the ones you saw when you were in school. <laughs> well, you know, Bill, one of my – actually, I should, I should ask you this question as well because you see the teams. Um, I'll go back to your senior year. Um, one of my favorite memories was going on the trip to Provo, Utah. And we were in the NCAA tournament and we were playing UCLA, the number two ranked team in the country. And uh, I think, was it Cunningham was their head coach? He'd just taken over from John Wooden. And we were playing and Guy Williams was a freshman. You were a senior. And we had like a double digit lead at halftime against UCLA, the number two ranked team in the country. And if we win that game, I think we're in the sweet 16 against DePaul and Mark Aguirre. And for whatever reason, Brad Holland and Roy Hamilton decided to go off in the second half. And we had no three point line then, but they just shot from everywhere. And we ended up, instead of being up by 12, I think we lost by 10 or 15. And so 
I always, Bill, let me ask you a question. You remember that game? And that was probably your last college game, right? What, well, I do, well, I do remember that game. And <laughs> what hurt us in that game is that UCLA uh, they actually played zone. And, wow. and we did not shoot well from the outside. That's what really hurt us. Okay. And then they got some momentum back. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, we got stalled. But, um, you know, that was a great game. And it was a great opportunity. So, yeah, just well, move, try to move past it. So those themes of those of that era, and you know your your first three years, of course, was the number one ranked teams. Time I was there at the end of your career, and then through the uh, Quentin Daly years, we were always a top twenty team. Great great players, you know. We had Kenny McAllister who played in the NFL. Um, he'd be a great guy to get on your podcast because, you know, we'd all love to find out what Kenny's been up to. Well, me too, but I can't find them. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> uh, Kenny McAllister, Bart Bowers, Quentin Daly. Um, gosh, John Hegwood was another one. Wallace Bryan, of course. And so we had NBA players. We had NFL players. And uh, we were tough, tough teams, um, winning teams. And I think the challenge that we always had when we got to the end of the season is there was always a little letdown, a little mental letdown. You know, having a six-point lead against Notre Dame and Digger Phelps and Orlando Woolridge with 16 seconds left and we lose the game. You know, those kinds of things. Having a 12-point lead against Kansas State and we'd lose the game. Um, I think the talent was always there and we were always, we could have done anything. We could have gone far Unfortunately, we just had some lapses at the wrong time. And when I compare it to, you know, the basketball programs today, um, you know, those USF teams could have easily been just as good as these current Gonzaga teams that are running through the conference in and every year, right? Um, yeah. It's, I mean, USF could have possibly sustained a run with the right stuff you know, for 10, 15, 20 years, like Gonzaga is doing now. But um, I'm glad to see the program doing well. I'm glad to see them being well coached by, by Todd. Um, actually, I'll give even some credit to go back a few years um, is when Rex Walters took over the program. He's one of the ones who reached out and said, hey, we got to start bringing back some of these USF players and, and members from past teams to get these kids to understand the history of the program. Cause for a lot of years, everybody just kind of forgot about all those good teams, you know, other than, you know, people like yourself who are legends, but you know, there are a lot of other good players that went through USF that um, like I said, sometimes the recognition isn't there because people want to forget. And so Rex started bringing people back and then, um, uh, the whole organization, the whole administration really started welcoming them back the history of the program. And Bill, I know that's what you're doing as well, is trying to get um, the kids today to understand what a, what a great program that USF has always had. And we can get back to those levels with good coaching and uh, hopefully get some good players in there. Yeah, it's, it's been great. And it's more of the invitation to to bring people to get people back and once you give them that invitation they usually show up so yeah it, uh, i mean i mean i think i think your podcast have uh have borne that out i mean everybody all these all these old teammates of yours and classmates of yours and etc um i think really appreciate you know somebody reaching out to them and saying hey you know i want to hear your story and what are you doing now and you know, come back to a game sometime and we'd love to have you back on campus. And I would say for a good 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years, that was not happening. And so I'm glad to see that happening with the program in, in today. Jeff, talk about your family. Talk about your wife, your kids. Um, yeah, I've been married now 25 years. Wow. 2020. <laughs> 2020 was a big year for my family. 
Um, it was my wife and I's 25th anniversary. I turned 60. My youngest son graduated from high school and turned 18. And my oldest son turned 21. All of this happened in a pandemic year where we couldn't really celebrate. You know, my oldest son, Jason, he's 21. He's a senior. He's graduating in a couple of months from Arizona State University. Um, he's had a great, uh, great experience there. He's a finance major. He's already got a job lined up. My youngest son, Dylan, is 18. Like I said, he had a virtual graduation, uh, but he is a freshman at the University of Washington in Seattle. And so we're really looking forward to getting him up in Seattle so he can have that college experience. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been together and my, my kids both love sports. And I told, uh, I told Jason that I was going to do this podcast. And he said, dad, don't talk too much. <laughs> he said, I know how you are. So here I, here I am rambling, but, um, but they're good. We're good. We're healthy. Again, we're, we're fortunate. We're blessed. And um, I'm happy that uh, my kids are getting the opportunity to go to good, good colleges. We got the little PAC 12 rivalries going now. As somebody who also works with like the athletic department, I think it's interesting, you know, to hear the perspective from somebody who wasn't an athlete, and I think it's instructive for anybody who's watching to realize like there's a lot of like you love sports as do I and not everybody can be blessed to be an amazing athlete like Bill. But I think it it's probably just as much a comment as a question, but I think it shows that there's a lot of careers for people in sports and a way to be involved, even if you're not a college level athlete, you know, and it affected your life and you made all these great friendships and they accepted you for you, you know? And so I think that probably gave you a lot of confidence moving forward. I, you know, it's a, it's a really good point again, because I think what's really important, and this is where I go back to Bob John senior, who was like a second father to many of us um, and giving you that structure in your life and telling you, you know, how to treat people and um, how to be aware of your surroundings and treat people the right way um, and be loyal you know, and so I certainly felt I was that way. And the, the interesting thing is, you know, I was never um, a, a Facebook kind of guy, right? A social media guy until the last couple of years when I had my high school reunion, I thought, ah, maybe I'll reconnect with some people. But it's been amazing. I've been able to reconnect with a lot of the old athletes and even non-athletes from USF, like Jim Young, who worked in the sports information department who went on to work for the Oakland A's and some other, some other programs and does scorekeeping. Uh, Hank Greenwald was our radio broadcaster. And you may remember Hank Greenwald, Steve being in New York. Okay. And Hank Greenwald and I got to be friends. And I remember his son, Douglas, as a little guy running around the court. And now Douglas and I have become friends. Um, and, um, you know, so it's those kinds of things that, you know, uh, has, has enabled me to reconnect. And I think um, just saying, I mean, there's some other people up in Seattle that are USF alums, just having that connection, I was able to call this gentleman who I haven't seen in probably 20 years and say, hey, my son's going to be going to the University of Washington. Tell me about it. Tell me what Seattle's like. And they're all open arms. I mean, Jeff, God, I remember you as, you know, part of the USF program. You were, you were there, you did everything for those guys. You know, what do you need? What can I help you with? So um, it is, it, it, you're exactly right. I mean, you can get a lot out of it and continue on in life um, with the experiences that you got. So very, very fortunate. And I, like I said, in the beginning, um, I didn't go to Santa Clara. I went to USF and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And your dad was okay with it, obviously. <laughs> uh, I, I, obviously. And, you, and you know, the, the, the funny thing is not a lot of people know this, but, uh, you know, they typically had 15 basketball scholarships. And when I was there, they only had 13 players. So they said, hey, since you're doing all this work, we're going to give you a full ride scholarship. And so for my sophomore, junior, senior years, my dad, who, who wanted me to go to Santa Clara, didn't have to pay my tuition. <laughs> now, now, granted, that was, you know, 40 years ago. Costs are a little different now, but uh, it was still nice. It's also 
a sign of validation for you that Bob Jaron and the team appreciate what you were doing and they valued it. Yeah. You know, so that's amazing. I was just going to, another question is just, it's a broad question, but how you talked about picking the right people around you. And it's kind of like in business, they say hire slow and fire fast, you know, but how do you know if people share your values? I mean, when do you know when to kind of, Hey, this is not somebody I want to pursue a relationship with. Uh, I think, I think, I think a lot of it is the attitude that people show. Um, you know, you want to hire good people, um, let them do their job, you know, and then thank them for doing their job. I think the one thing in life that we don't do enough is thanking people and, and showing that we appreciate their work. And it's not always, um, you know, salary increases or monetary stuff. It's, it's just sometimes genuine thank you. And I really appreciate everything you're doing. And, you know, I think, and again, um, I, I felt that at USF with everything I did. Hey, you're doing a great job. And matter of fact, uh, before the program was kind of halted, going into the next year, I, I graduated. They asked me if I wanted to be a grad assistant and go to graduate school and have me stay with the program. And, you know, my response was, hey, thanks, but no thanks. I want to get out in the real world and make some money. So, so I kind of wonder what would have happened if I would have taken that other route, but who knows? I'm happy. I'm happy. Everything worked out. Well, Jeff, very, very good. I'm very, very pleased you were able to come on the show. Uh, we're always excited to see you. It's too bad we couldn't see each other this year, but uh, uh, this next season we'll get together. Really look forward to it. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, I appreciate it, uh, Bill. You're it's it's fantastic what you're doing for the school. And it's great to have you back in the Bay Area. Um, and it's good to see you out on the golf course too, so. Yeah, that's our next stop. Yep, yep. We gotta do it this summer. <laughs>